Thank you for that round of applause. Uh, I am Gene Epstein, director of the Soho Forum. And without further ado, because we have a lot to cover in this debate, I want to introduce our two debaters. Uh, speaking for the affirmative, uh, Yaron Brook, please come to the stage. Yaron Brook, please come to the stage. Speaking for the negative, uh, John Mackey, please come to the stage. If you, if you don't know who these guys are, then look it up, uh, because I don't have any time to tell you. Uh, I only have to tell you that they disagree deeply about certain aspects of how business should conduct itself, even though they agree about many other things, most things, in fact. Uh, but the resolution reads, the only purpose of business is to maximize long-term profits. Uh, Yaren, you have 10 minutes to speak for the affirmative. Take it away, Yaren. Is the mic on? There we go. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, afternoon, everybody. Hope you had a good lunch. So we all know whoa, that capitalism is under attack. Indeed, uh, on every front, we're chipping away at the last remnants of capitalism in America today, in politics, in culture, and now in business as well. The Business Roundtable recently has declared that it's not the purpose of business to maximize shareholder wealth, long-term shareholder wealth, long-term profits, long-term value creation. The purpose of business now is to balance a variety of different stakeholders and to maximize some kind of stakeholder idea of capitalism. Of course, many have pounced on this notion, and you can see the, the movements, the ESG movements and other types of movements you know, rallying around us. So we just got uh, you know, I think four new or, or three new directors on the board of Exxon who are advocates of turning Exxon into a, uh, I guess, a solar panel company. Uh, we're seeing woke culture being introduced into business, and we're seeing the rise of what many are calling woke capitalism. All through this gap that has said, you don't have to worry about shareholders. You don't have to worry about maximizing shareholder wealth. Your responsibilities are to society as large and then we fill in the blank of what that means. Right? John might meet well in what he wants to fill in. With the, in but the ESG movement and many of the movements out there, they don't. They don't care about capitalism. They don't care about freedom. They don't care about business. They want their social agenda in every aspect of American life and business is maybe the last one to fall. Let's not let that happen. I believe the role of business, business is a unique institution. If you want to advocate for social causes, you can start a nonprofit. You can even start a business called a Corp B, where the corporation in advance says, we're not going to maximize shareholder wealth. We're not going to be about profits. We're going to do something else. You can organize that way. But a standard, normal business, a corporation, is an institution organized around value creation. And the measure of value creation is profit. How much you add to the world, how much you add to people's well-being, is in the end measured by how much money you make. When you make a lot of money, it means your customers are buying your product. They value your product so much, so much more than what it costs you to produce. So you make a large profit. I think profit is cool. It means that you've added, you've created something that didn't exist before. And of course, to make a profit, now make a profit, John knows this better than I do. He's made many more profits than I have. To make profit is hard work requires real effort, a lot of thinking. It requires massive coordination. You have to figure out who to hire, how much to pay them, how well to treat them, in the context of how they will help you make a profit. You have to go on and hire suppliers. 
Which suppliers? Where? What's the supply chain going to look like? Where do they come from? How do you treat them? Well, you have to treat them in the context and choose them in the context of how do they help you make a profit? And of course, you have to treat customers just right. Now, you could say we have to treat them wonderfully. Yes, some companies, that's the business model. But at Walmart, they don't treat you wonderfully, but they provide customers a value. Maybe through cheaper prices, maybe through less customer service. But people love Walmart because they get a value from Walmart. So what's the context by which you decide how to treat your customers, how well to treat them? How will you produce a profit? And if you treat your customers badly, we know, we know, you're not going to make money. Making money requires you provide a value. It requires value creation. So American business has been incredibly successful, focused on this business model of taking all these elements out there. Five suppliers, minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Suppliers and customers and uh, every one of these groups out there, the community they, in which they live, and treating them appropriately within the context of making money and the wealth we have today, the variety of products we have today, the benefits that we all enjoy from the world of business out there is a result of companies pursuing profit maximization, a result of companies realizing that they're in business because they're in business and they have certain owner, owners, right? One of, the, one of the other reasons I am big on uh, profit maximization or shareholder wealth maximization is really this issue of property rights, right? Somebody owns the business. We recognize in the law, and I think in our common culture, that shareholders own the business. That's what a stock means, it's a piece of ownership. Well, what's your job as a manager working for an owner? Is it to pursue your social purposes, your social goals? No, it's to maximize the benefit to the owner, to the shareholder, to the person who hired you to manage and run the business. These ideas, I think, are at the core of capitalism, at the core of freedom, and at the core of what will be necessary to continue to defend the little that's left of capitalism and freedom in America today. So let's not give it up. Let's reinvigorate our defense of what profit means. Profit doesn't mean exploitation. Profit doesn't mean not caring about your workers and your customers. Profit doesn't mean squandering. Profit means the creation of value. And we all benefit from that because remember, as a customer, as a supplier, as an employee, your relationship with a healthy business is a win-win relationship. You benefit and they benefit. They make money. You either make money as a supplier, you make money as an employee, or you get the product that you're willing to pay for as a customer. But business is about win-win relationships. It's not about exploitation. It's not about taking advantage. It's about a business creating something you want and are willing to pay more for. Two minutes, two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> more for than what, you know, so you're willing to pay, you give up dollars because the product you're getting is worth more to you than the dollars that you're giving up. Who lost? We all win. So, if we focus on defending profit, on defending the freedom of businesses to maximize value for us, to maximize <clears throat> value for themselves, to maximize the profits for their owners. Everybody wins. In the long run, everybody wins. 
But in order to manage a complex business, one has to have an integrating principle. And the integrating principle, the only integrating principle that makes sense, in my view, the only integrating principle that provides us with the kind of prosperity that we benefit from One minute. is the principle of profit maximization, which again, profit is a result of creating value. You don't make money unless you create something that the customers want and the customers are willing to buy from you, right? At enough of a price that you make money off of it. 30 seconds. So let's not give up on that. Thank you all. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, again, the resolution reads, the only purpose of business is to maximize long-term profits. Speaking for the negative, John Mackey, 10 minutes. Take it away, John. So, well, let's look at this resolution. The only purpose of business is to maximize long-term profits. The key word is only. I'm not going to argue against profits. I mean, the reality is I started a business 43 years ago with $45,000. Two employees, my girlfriend and myself, and today, 43 years later, we have 530 stores doing $21 billion in sales, and we've made billions of dollars of profits. And yet, profits has never been the major goal. Profits have become as a result of creating value for customers. Um, I want to argue that profit is not the only purpose of business, and profit is not even the primary purpose of business. This isn't about woke capitalism, and that's appealing to the audience and putting in something I'm not going to talk about or, or don't support. Business creates value for multiplicity of, yes, stakeholders. It creates value for its customers. It creates value for its employees. It creates value for its suppliers. It creates value for its investors. And it creates value for the communities it's part of. All of those things. There's a complexity to business. It's not a simple morality tale of good versus evil, saints versus sinners. Business is part of society. It's an important part of society. When you combine scientific breakthroughs with business and entrepreneurial capitalism, you get the great prosperity that's happened in the world in the last 250 years ago. Business is fundamentally good because it creates value for customers and for all of its stakeholders. Business is ethical because it's based on voluntary exchange for mutual gains and benefits. And business is heroic because it has lifted billions of people out of poverty <coughs> and has led to what Deidre McCloskey calls the great enrichment. Now, I want you to consider all the professions that we have in the world today in America. Let's take doctors. Is doctors' purpose to maximize profits? <coughs> Of course not. The purpose of doctors is to heal people. That's their purpose. They do a good job. Doctors are well compensated, but their purpose is not to maximize their profits. Teachers educate people. Architects design buildings. Engineers construct things. Every one of the professions refers back to some type of value creation that they're doing for other people. That's their purpose. The result of fulfilling that purpose is they make money. It's no different with business. Consider the fact that great companies have great purposes. Let's look at some of those purposes. Tesla, to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. LinkedIn, to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. PayPal, to build the web's most convenient, secure, cost-effective payment solution. Amazon, which owns Whole Foods to be Earth's most customer-centric company where customers can find and discover anything they want, might want to buy online, endeavors to offer its, its customers the lowest possible prices. Nike, bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. If you have a body, you are an athlete. Nordstrom, to give customers the most compelling shopping experience possible. Patagonia, build the best product, cause no unnecessary harm, use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. Finally, Whole Foods Market. 
Our purpose is to nourish people and the planet. What do these great companies know that Yarn Brook doesn't know? They know that maximizing long-term profits is not the primary purpose of business. The purpose of business is to create value for customers. Profits is something that results from that. It's not the purpose. He's putting the cart before the horse. Consider the fact I have red blood cells. If my body doesn't produce red blood cells, I'm going to die. It doesn't logically follow that because I have red blood cells that the purpose of my life is to produce red blood cells. Similarly, business must make money or it will die. But it doesn't logically follow that that's why it exists. It doesn't exist to make profits. Profits are an effect of creating value for other people. He's got it backwards. Five minutes, five minutes. Profit and purpose are not opposites, they're linked together. Profit is something that is important to business, but it's not the primary reason business exists. As a business person, let's imagine, for example, that Whole Foods was just articulate, oh, our, our higher purpose is to maximize long-term profits. Some, uh, uh, an employee comes to work and the first day we say, hey, welcome to Whole Foods. Your job while you're here is to maximize profits. Now, which do you think is going to be more inspiring and motivating to people? Your purpose at Whole Foods is to nourish people in the planet or to make as much money to the shareholders as possible? Similarly, do you think you're going to have uh, inspired customers if you put up on your, in your stores, like at Whole Foods put, puts up our higher purpose in the stores, and we say, we're maximizing shareholder value, we're maximizing profits, that's why we exist. So glad you're shopping here today to help us do that. I want you to consider the many business scandals that have happened over the last 30 years. And most of them have occurred under the idea that the purpose of business is to maximize shareholder value, long-term shareholder value. Enron and Arthur Anderson cooking the books and misleading the public, which caused tremendous social harm and ultimately destroyed both companies or Volkswagen lying about their diesel emissions and then trying to cover it up. British Petroleum cutting their safety pro protocols in order to make more money, ignoring the many warnings that their engineers gave them that they shouldn't be doing it, that doing so would significantly increase the risk of a major oil spill, and that resulting in the largest oil spill in the history of the world. Wells Fargo creating millions of fraudulent savings and checking accounts for clients without their consent. Philip Morris, R.J. Reynolds, and the other tobacco companies working for decades, decades, to cover up the harmful effects of smoking, the fact that it shortens our lives, leads to cancer. Union carbides, careless gas leak in India, which led to harming over 500,000 people and killed 3,787 people directly. These are just a few of the terrible scandals that have happened for businesses whose stated purpose was to maximize long-term profits. When we make that our goal, we actually send a signal to the management that you know, maximizing the management's compensation is, becomes management's goal, and then taking the shortcuts that undermines the integrity of the business is usually and frequently happens. Let's contrast that to making minutes. profit as the higher maximize, maximizing profit as the higher purpose with what Mike Roman, CEO of 3M, had to say. Great and enduring companies are driven by purpose and they build, build the company on a foundation of trust. Trust from our customers, employees, partners, shareholders, and communities. At 3M, we cannot break that trust ever. If companies are built on higher purposes, it is far more likely, far more likely, this is the paradox, it is far more likely that they will maximize long-term shareholder value. They will maximize profits over the long term by having a higher purpose. I have known hundreds of entrepreneurs in my lifetime. It's been my privilege to know entrepreneurs like 
Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Bill Two minute, Gates. One minute, one minute, one minute. These guys are the richest people in the world. And I promise you, not one of them is that what they mostly care about. That's not what's driven them. What's driven them, he, he, he talked to somebody like Elon Musk, the guy's on fire. He wants to help humanity to move forward. He wants to create a better planet, a more sustainable future for all of us. And yet the guy's worth over $100 billion. And yet that wasn't his goal. That's not what he set out to do. 30 seconds. He set out to create value for his customers and to fulfill a more transcendent purpose. The result of that, paradoxically, is that we create more profits. Was it? Thank you very much. It's four minutes. Yeah. Thank, thank you, John. Uh, we are going to go to the rebuttal portion, but I want to uh, tell you in advance that there will be a 12-minute Q&A section, which is uh, why we have two mics on the other aisle. So uh, if you're going to have a question, think about it as you're listening to the rebuttals. Four minutes for rebuttal. Take it away, Yaron. So how well did the companies that cook the books maximize shareholder wealth? How well did they do in terms of long-term profits? I would argue the exact opposite. It's because they didn't focus on maximizing long-term shareholder wealth. It's because they didn't focus on maximizing profits that they found themselves doing things that actually eliminated profitability, destroyed businesses, destroyed shareholders, and landed them up in jail. That's called short-term thinking, not long-term wealth and value creation. Of course, businessmen are motivated by a variety of different purposes. Yes, I agree. Entrepreneurs don't go into business with the goal, the sole goal of making money. But the only way to make their, money, their company viable, the only way to integrate the vast amount of information that they have in order to produce, in order to create the values that customers want, is to focus on profit. I mean, Apple has a very nice mission statement, and yet the profit margin on these things is 50%. Now, I don't begrudge them that. This is worth a lot more than I paid for it, so I'm happy to get it. And the fact is that they make that money, and they reinvest it, and they produce other beautiful products that I then consume. What integrates them is not, you know, whatever that mission statement is, that's nice, that motivates, that drives them, but what integrates their decision making, what integrates how they actually function, what integrates the trade-offs they have to make between different decisions. I mean, imagine you have to close a plant in Chicago because it's too expensive to do business there and move it to South Dakota because it's much cheaper to, make, to do business. Two here. minutes, two minutes. I mean, what about the employees in Chicago? They're going to lose their jobs. They're going to suffer. They're not going to win in the short run. Employees in South Dakota, but they're new. Do you take them into account? This idea of stakeholder, utility maximizing, how do you actually weigh the different considerations? How do you weigh the different stakeholders? Well, the way you do it is you optimize around profits. And I know it's uncomfortable to think about that, because we live in a culture that does demonize the idea of profit. But it's the only way in which we can integrate the vast information, the vast trade-offs that we have to do in business in order to achieve whatever it is that this particular business is focused on achieving. And there's no question, every business is focused within its realm. It has to be focused on a particular realm, particular industry, particular set of products, particular set of customers in order to achieve something. One minute, one minute. The value creation. But the only way that can be achieved is a ruthless focus on what is going to produce financial results, long-term shareholder wealth. And that, I would add, is also their fiduciary legal responsibility. They are the representatives of the owners. They can't just do whatever they want. They can't, you motivate an employee when he comes in about some higher purpose. You've got to help your customers. Well, you're seconds. not going to tolerate him just giving the product away because he's trying to help products, customers. It's within the context of profit. Was that it? Was that... You have 20 seconds. Oh, it's confusing. <laughs>
<laughs> the context is, yes, you want to do, you want to be amazing to a customer if you're at Whole Foods. Within the context of, Whole Foods has to make money. It's going to make money. It's trying to maximize how much it makes for its owners. So it's not, it is the only purpose of business, that's the proposition, right? Only. But under that only, all these subcategories of things that have to happen so that you can only maximize shareholder wealth. Five Thank seconds you. over, five seconds over. You get an extra five seconds, John. Take it away. <laughs> wow. I love competing with guys like Yaron Brooks in business. We eat them up for lunch. Hope they They're unable to motivate their employees. They do not create loyalty with their customers. They don't understand the interdependencies of stakeholders. They're easy to defeat in business. How many of you read The Lord of the Rings or saw the movies? Yes? He believes in the one ring, one ring to rule them all, one ring to find them, and one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness, bind them. Yarn believes that profits, that will unite everything together and we'll do everything right because profits is, is we make that the gold and we'll make it all work. You know, you can take any of the stakeholders and say exactly the same thing. Let's say my goal was to maximize customer value and satisfaction. Now, I couldn't do that if I didn't make a lot of money. I have to get the money in order to create more stores. And, but the goal is, is to maximize customer satisfaction, as many customers as possible. You can build the business around the customers. That can be the one ring that rules them all. Or you could do it with the employees as well. I want to maximize team member happiness at Whole Foods. So I have to make a lot of money to do that so we can create more stores and hire more people and create more value. All of the stakeholders are interdependent. He doesn't understand that. He thinks they're at war with each other. There's some kind of massive trade-offs going on all the time. But when you're running a business, a complex business, you have to take all of the stakeholders into account. You have to create simultaneously value for customers, for your team members, for your suppliers, for your shareholders, for your investors, and the communities that we're part of. These things are not in isolation. They're connected together. And I can tell you from my personal experience in business, and from all the great entrepreneurs I've known, that when we have a transcendent purpose, that unites it all far better, far, far better than focusing on maximizing just profits for the investors. And in fact, when, when you compete against somebody like two minutes, that, two minutes. generally their businesses don't underperform. That's been my experience. And as I pointed out, there's a tendency when you focus on profits, that sends the wrong communication to your employees, your customers, and all the other stakeholders. The management team can become crony capitalists. They begin to drift away from the higher purpose of the business. They begin to think about their own personal profits. How do I maximize my profits as a management, as a CEO? And so they're off track. Profit is not the best way to buy it. Would you want to go to a doctor who you didn't feel like their main goal was to help you get healthy? But their main goal was to get as much money out of you as possible? Would that, we'd we, we like our medical system to be like that? Or our teachers are just trying to extract more money out of us because to maximize their profits? No. Profits, if that's the main goal, it's easy to drift away from what really matters in business. And what really matters is creating value for our customers. Profits are a result of that. They aren't the purpose themselves. And that's where he and I disagree. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Okay, that was record time. Thank you, John. Uh, we now move to the Q&A portion of the evening. I'm gonna stand over here and uh, I'm, uh, oops, yeah, that's good. We've got some good people. Uh, I'm, oh. gonna, I'm gonna ration you two debaters to only one question that you can ask of the other. You can, you can exercise that option at any time, but if you want to wave it and wait for audience questions, it looks like Yaron wants to wave it and wait for audience questions, but although you can exercise that option later. Wait, audience questions? John, you want a question? So I, I have a question for Yarn. if, if I can, right. can Good, do that first. Uh, lay it on him, lay it on him. That's your only question, John. Get, that's so it. Yarn, here's my question. Do you believe that Ayn Rand's major 
heroic characters in Atlas Shrugged, such as Henry Reardon, Dagny Taggart, John Galt, and Francisco de Anconia, were primarily motivated by maximizing profits or by more transcendent purposes. As an entrepreneur to me, it's obvious that each of these passionate and heroic characters were driven by purposes that went way beyond only maximizing profits. Take Henry Reardon as the best example. What drove him to work 20 hours a day? Was he just to maximize the profits of Reardon Steel? Heck no. The guy was clearly motivated to create a better product. I think we understand your question, John. That's my question. Do you really believe these? Do you believe Henry Reardon was okay. primarily motivated to maximize sure. profits, or did he have some other transcendent purpose? Okay, okay, sure. John. You just asked the question. And That's my answer. question. That's my question. John just asked the, asked the question and he answered it. But what's Yellen's answer? Go ahead. Oh, yeah, you're. I can't hear you. Um, oh, sorry. No, I think the the the, in, the purpose of the individual. The purpose of the individual entrepreneur, the purpose of the individual uh, CEO, the purpose of the individual manager is clearly not, not focused primarily on profit, but the business. So Hank Reardon, in the context of the business, he is motivated. His day-to-day -day motivation is clearly about producing and creating and everything. But, you know, he has this interchange with Dagny. If, you, if you've all read Alice Shrug, and if you haven't, you really should. He has this interchange with Dagny where well, she really needs the metal, right? And he could sell it to her pretty much for any, you know, for any price, and he does. He charges her a price where he gets a real profit on what he's done. So what is motivating his business decisions is profit. What motivates him in terms of his actions on a day-to-day -day basis, yes, he has a you know, he's pursuing his happiness, just like any one of us as individuals. But you as a manager, when you go to work, you are working for an owner, for the purpose of producing and creating a profit. And Dagny is constantly fighting to make money. She's constantly fighting to make money. Yes, but is that the only purpose? Of course not for her personally. For none of us personally, it is. But the Thank goal you, I rest my case. Yeah, all right. Okay. Um, question. Uh, please phrase your question as a question. Don't identify yourself. Don't make a speech. Lay the question on him. Take it away. I believe I was first. What? Go ahead. This is a question for, uh, for your own. Uh, biotechnology companies that develop cancer drugs have an incentive to charge as much as possible because the Medicare program is required by law to pay, subsidize, the price of that drug for the consumer who pays nothing. Should pharmaceutical companies, in order to maximize shareholder value, charge a, a billion dollars for a drug that uh, normally might cost, in a true market setting, a hundred dollars? <sighs> they should fight to get rid of Medicare. That's what they should do. Um, in the meantime, what should they do? Is that is that would that advance their shareholder profits to get rid of Medicare? Yes, I, I think also? it would. Clearly, it would. Uh, sh certainly, if shareholders put aside, if shareholders would benefit enormously if you privatized healthcare, in spite of the fact that doctors shouldn't pursue profit. If you privatized healthcare, uh, shareholders would benefit enormously, absolutely. Uh, but drug companies do and should maximize their ability to generate profit from those drugs, and they do. They find the right balance. Of course, a billion dollars, nobody can afford it. Medicare wouldn't pay for it. So they have to balance what can be paid, what uh, charity pays, what, uh, what all the different elements pay, they do maximize, and they should maximize the profitability of that, even in the world in which we live today, which is dramatically screwed up. Uh, John, any comment on the question? Uh, comment on the question? From you, John. Do you have a comment on that question? On I, I think it's a great, a great question, because I think logically they should get as much as they can get, Maybe. even if it's harmful to their patients, even if it's something that uh, people can't afford. If they can get away with it, they should get away with it. I think that's what he's, his, that's the logic of his argument, in my opinion. Uh, uh, question. Okay, Mark Skousen. Um, so I'd like to ask John a question. Personal injury attorneys, uh, do they, are they seeking to really benefit the people or are they just selfish, oh, greedy people who are just trying to take advantage of the system? And you see this also in many professions. You see it in dentists who are aggressively saying, oh, you, you, you have tooth decay, we have to give you a crown. I got this all the time from dentists because the, the profit margins were much higher on putting in a crown even though I didn't really need one. Or surgeons 
who are constantly pushing you to engage in surgery that's totally unnecessary. To what, per, what percent of professionals are really it, more interested in the money than really these uh, idealistic uh, views that you have of, as the purpose of business? I have no idea what percentage of dentists and doctors and personal injury attorneys are corrupted by focusing strictly on profits. I'd say to the degree they do, they're unethical. They're no longer true professionals because they are no longer fulfilling the, the oath that they took when they became professionals. That's what I say to that. But you know what? You should find, I tend to do business with people I trust. And when I find a dentist or anybody else, a lawyer that I think is, is uh, primarily focused in taking as much money from me as possible, I, I, I find another dentist, Mark. That's my advice to you. So people so, do, do in fact. Uh, there, are, there are bad actors so, in every so, profession, Mark. There are corrupt people everywhere. Yeah, so let, let's, oh, you know, the assumption I'm making here, and maybe I should have been explicit about it, is that people are acting ethically. They, they're gonna be crooks. If a dentist is lying to you, he's lying to you, and that's unethical, and that's not acceptable behavior, no matter what his motivation is. So it's all within the context of people are not committing fraud, which is what, so, which is the, what you're are, describing. Not necessarily fraud, but there are lots are of people, people committing fraud every day. What I'm asking, John, is are there really, in fact, people that simply don't have these ideals that you're talking about that are just profit-oriented? They're not necessarily committing fraud, but they're just... If they're lying they're to you about the dentistry... They just want to make money. That's all they want to do. Of course there are people like that. There's a lot of people like that, Mark, because we've had this message that the purpose of business is to maximize profits for so long that people begin to act that way. That was uh, Mark Skousen of Freedom Fest, who runs Freedom Fest probably because he doesn't just maximize profit. Thank you very much, Mark. Go ahead. Yeah. It seems to me that the differences sort of revolve around um, altruism or egoism and the gray area surrounding them. And I was kind of wondering how this would relate to a personal life, like what's my motive for being a husband, a father? So I was wondering if either one of you could speak to your ideas as applied to personal relationships, like what is the main drive in, in relationships? Is it to maximize my profits, concern with, with the people I love? Uh, yeah, yeah, happy to. Yeah, I mean, I think it is to maximize, obviously in personal relationship, the issue is not profit. It's, it's, it's happiness, uh, joy, success, uh, and you interact with people. This is, <laughs> this is why people get divorced, because it's not working anymore. You're not generating, the relationship is not generating happiness and therefore there's a divorce. But at the end of the day, I am a moral egoist. I believe that the way, what you should be pursuing are your own values and your own happiness. Now, it's easy to straw man the idea of egoism, but that means you have deep, meaningful relationship with other people because they're of value to you, because they contribute to your happiness and your well-being. It's not, I don't care about anybody, to hell with everybody else. You know, that's what egoism means. No, egoism means that I'm living for my own sake, for my own happiness. What does happiness require? It's like profit. What does profit require? Well, it's complicated, right? There's a lot of different factors. And the way I integrate those factors around my life is how do all these things contribute to my happiness? If I thought children were not going to contribute to my happiness, I wouldn't have them. Right? Um, the reason I had them is because I believed that they would contribute. Thank you, Yaren. Uh, your children, and now John, could you please respond to the question? And the answer is obviously both. We are complex. Human beings are complex. We are both self-interested and we love. We are both. And we don't just love because it makes us happy to do it. We will make sacrifices of our own interest we are complex, and in my experience, people that mm, primarily live for themselves are not as happy. They're more narcissistic, they're more self-involved, and uh, they don't seem to care as much. So I think we're both, humans are complex, and in my experience in life, love is what gives life meaning, and uh, yeah, I just want to do more of it. Question. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> Most people here probably have read Wealth of Nations. I wonder how many have read Theory of Moral Sentiment, which Adam Smith thought was his more important book. Um, Theory of Moral Sentiment talked about why we do things for other people. 
and a lot of it boils down to um, manners and wanting to uh, have self-respect. What is your question? Your question? Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. So that feeds into a, a provocative observation. I didn't hear any contradictions between the two of you. I think that, that what you were both saying was the same thing in very, very different ways. Emphasis on long-term profits means you're not going to be corrupt. You're not going to risk putting uh, customers at, at risk of death. You're not going to risk going to jail. And um, I, I think I understand your question, yeah. sir. Your question is, to what extent do you feel you disagree with Yaron? Yaron, to what extent do you feel you disagree with John? Uh, and uh, uh, because this gentleman thinks you basically agree with each other. So go ahead, yeah. How do you yeah. disagree with Yaron? John. I just disagree that the only purpose of business is to maximize profits. And that's the statement of the resolution, and I disagree with that. Yaron, yeah, how do you disagree with John? So, so I, I, I think that uh, the approach of, uh, of viewing all stakeholders somehow equal, some kind, kind of utilitarian function, opens the door to, uh, to really, really bad ideas uh, destroying American businesses. So I, I disagree with that focus and emphasizing like that. Would we disagree about any particular business decision? I don't know, probably not, but, uh, but, but maybe in some cases. This is gonna have to be a, a final question, unfortunately. Hopefully you'll be able to buttonhole these guys afterwards. <laughs> we, we wanted an hour and a half session. If you wanna complain, Mark <laughs> is right back there. <laughs> Bring your complaints to Mr. Skousen, who's maximizing, I don't know what he's maximizing. I don't know what he's yeah, maximizing. Go ahead, yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you guys very much for, uh, for, for doing this. Uh, I think, nope. I, how do each of you define purpose? Because it seems like you're on your your definition is more of uh, in the realm of function, and then your definition is more in the realm of vision or calling, and I don't think that those are mutually exclusive. Purpose, go ahead, purpose. Anybody want to take that? How do you define purpose? So purpose is, uh, is the integrating, uh, it's, it's what your life integrates around. If it's a personal purpose, it's what your life integrates around. And then the question is, what is a business, what is, what is the integrating factor, the factor that integrates all the decisions of a business towards what? Uh, that, that, that is what I think a purpose is. A personal purpose is, you know, to, for me, my moral purpose is my happiness. Everything integrates around that, and I don't think it leads to narcissism. And love, I think, is the most selfish of all emotions. There's no emotion more selfish than love. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I think we, we only now have time for the summations. John, may, you might be able to do your comment about that in your summation, I hope, uh, unless you want to take a moment to discuss purpose. Go ahead. Go purpose is what, our, what we care most deeply about, and it's what, it's what calls us forward. My own higher purpose is to help heal America. That's my own higher purpose, and my life is dedicated to that proposition. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, we have four minutes for summations. Yaron, do your summation. Four minutes, take it away. Yaron, your, four, okay. your four minute summation. Okay. You are the positive, you are the affirmative, you go first. The summation, yeah, go Beginning, ahead. Beginning, not at the purpose. Okay. What? Uh, <laughs> you know, one of, the, one, of the, um, one of the mistaken conceptions of profit is that it is about, and I think this is in our culture, this is everywhere, and it unfortunately even enters into John's discussion, is this idea that profit is about exploitation. Profit is about immorality. Profit is about fraud. Profit is about co cooking the books. That's not profit. That's the negation of profit. Certainly long-term profit, long-term wealth maximization. Morality requires us to think long-term, not just to focus on right now, in life and in business and in every aspect. And I completely agree with John that everything is interconnected, absolutely. And I used to run this exercise with my students. You have to make this decision about closing the plant in Chicago and opening it in South Dakota or make it worse, yep, you know, opening a plant in Mexico. And okay, let's list all the stakeholders on the board. There are 20, 30, 40 stakeholders that we can list. And now let's make a decision. Some stakeholders are better off, some stakeholders are worse off. Some stakeholders are indifferent. Some stakeholders, half of them are, you know, some of them are pro this and some of them are against it. How do you make a decision? How do you weight them? Who do you weight more? Who do you weight less? How do you deal with the trade-offs that are a necessary part of running a complex enterprise, any complex enterprise. 
you have to have some principle by which to integrate them. And in a business, in a, particularly in a publicly traded corporation, that principle should be obvious. What is going to maximize the benefit to the owners? You're their employee as a CEO, as a management team. You're working for them. How do you maximize the benefit for them? And that's maximizing long-term shareholder wealth. And again, you take all those issues, two all minutes. the 30... Two minutes, two minutes, go ahead, two minutes. All the 30 stakeholders that are involved. And now you've got a principle by which to decide what the trade-offs are going to be. What is going to generate the long-term benefit to the owners of the business? And that means some people are going to be better off, some people will be worse off. But nobody can be treated so badly as they don't help you, they don't add to this purpose of making money. Now, making money is a beautiful thing. It's about creating real values. It's about lifting your customers up. It's about engaging in win-win relationships with everybody in your business, with everybody in order to make life better. Businesses that don't do that, lose. Businesses that don't do that, go out of business. One minute. And there, I'm sure businesses that started out with great purposes that were not related to profit, and they're not around anymore. We don't know. We don't have them because, you know, it's called survivorship bias. Only the ones that survived are around. And the ones that survived have to make decisions, have to make trade-offs, have to decide how to run the business and how seconds. to create value. 30 seconds. And that value creation is measured. The measure of value creation is profit. How do we know Amazon has created immense value in the world because of how much Jeff Bezos is worth? That's how we know that they've changed our lives. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Four minutes, John, take it away. I don't believe my debate opponent understands stakeholders. I don't think he understands yes. interdependency. Yes. He, he mostly sees it sort of a Hobbesian trade-offs, that these stakeholders are at war with each other, and that somehow or another you have to make profit your goal in order to sift it all through. Business is complex. When you run a large corporation like Whole Foods Market, it's highly complex. There are a number of different variables. And what I have found, if you want to know what unites it, it's not seeking profits. It's looking for win, win, win solutions, where all the stakeholders are simultaneously benefiting. When you look for trade-offs, you find trade-offs. When you look for synergies, you find synergies. He sees nothing but trade-offs, whereas I see we can create business strategies that create value simultaneously for our customers, for our employees, for our suppliers, for our investors, indeed, for the larger community. Is that easy to do? No, it's hard to do. It takes a great deal of creativity and imagination. I can tell you I've been doing it successfully for 43 years now, and so are most of the great corporations in America doing that now. The world is changing the way it thinks about business. I want you to consider the fact that capitalism and business are very much under attack. And they're under attack primarily because we've been saying the purpose of business is to maximize profits. Consider the fact that socialism has been tried 41 times in the last 100 years, and it has failed 41 times. You would think we would give up on that dream. Why haven't we given up on it? Because we don't deliver the right message about what business is. People see business as fundamentally concerned about maximizing profits. That seems wrong Two minutes. to Two the minutes. average person. And as a result, we can't seem to kill socialism. It's like the zombie that he's coming back to life. Now, I think somebody like Yaron Brooks is a very well-intentioned man. I probably agree with him on about 98%, as was pointed out uh, by one of the audience members. We agree about a lot. But I think 
The idea that purpose is the only, uh, that profit is the only purpose of business is completely wrong. And if it, and when it's, and when it's put out as, a, as an ethic, business is disliked and mistrusted. It doesn't motivate customers. It doesn't motivate employees. It's not inspiring, and it ultimately leads to short-term corruption thinking. He can talk about the long-term all he wants to, but most human beings don't function that way. They start looking out for what is in their own best short-term self-interest, and that's why we end up having those corruption and those scandals. Um, one minute, one minute. Great. Um, let me just end then with this wonderful quote by one of the greatest entrepreneurs of this time, and that's Mark Benioff the founder and CEO of Salesforce. Truly great companies care about all of their stakeholders, employees, customers, partners, shareholders, in the communities where we live and work, and the environment that sustains us. The purpose of business is to make the world a better place. 30 seconds. Thanks for listening to me today. <laughs> I wish for everyone here a life full of purpose and full of love. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you to both our debaters uh, and uh, all of you. I hope to see you in New York City this fall, September, October, November. We have debates. We're going back to New York City big time for our physical in-person debates. Go into the Soul Forum org for complete information. Thanks to John, thanks to Yaren, and thank you all. Good.